Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the ultimate blowout special. I like doing videos like this, guys. It's fun to just look back at some of the biggest blowouts in the college football season for 2022. If I can find the information, I might do like the craziest blowouts in the past decade. But right now, it would kind of be hard for me to find that. I don't really have a site that can curate the info and make it nice. But overall, we're just going to go through this, starting with two bowl teams. <laughs> yes, Utah State is a bowl team. Uh, Alabama, the number one overall team coming into this season. It's funny how quickly we kind of forget, like, Bama was the juggernaut. It was Bama and Ohio State returning Bryce Young. They had Will Anderson, C.J. Stroud for Ohio State, the two top Heisman contenders, and they just thrashed a horrible Utah State team who still is really bad, but they did at least make a bowl game 55 to nothing. I believe that was like a 7:30 week one game. I remember watching Ohio State Notre Dame, not even remembering this game yeah, I don't even think I saw a play from it, honestly. Look, look, the win probability. Yeah, w real competitive. This is competitive college football, guys. Guys, this is why we need the 12-team playoffs. So teams schedule tougher games out of conference. Next, we have a week three game. Or is this week? This was week two, I think. Utah, after falling to Florida, they faced the FCS Southern Utah. So it's the battle for Utah. It's an ultimate ultimate rivalry. And look at Southern Utah's quarterback, 11-21. 21. 21 pass attempts for 42 yards. It, I'm not even sure how that's possible. Uh, by the way, Utah's tight end is a beast, and he's going to be in the draft. I think he's going to be a first-round pick. He's literally George Kittle 2.0. And Cam Rising, uh, I saw Kirk Herbstreet talking about it. Cam Rising is legitimately underrated. Like, he is a good quarterback. But no one really cares because Utah lost that week one game and they were never really in the national picture. Even after they beat USC, I feel like nobody talked about them. They just talked about USC and Caleb Williams losing. But here they go, dropping a 70-burger on an FCS school. And this yardage, I forgot about this, 85 total yards for Southern Utah, 600 for Utah. Uh, so that is a crazy difference there. They Southern Utah had one third down conversion. They had four total first downs. I would imagine most of them came in garbage time too. Next, we've got another standard FCS blowout. It is James Madison destroying Norfolk State 63-7. to And we remember James Madison, I think, what did they start, 5-0? and They started 5-0. and they got ranked at number 25, and then they immediately lost a shootout to Georgia Southern, and then they lost like three more games. So they, they went out with a bang for sure, but James Madison, I would say, certainly had a successful first year, you know, even though the season ended not great. Anytime you can be in the national picture, your first year in FBS it's crazy. I mean, we were at the point mid-season where we were talking about what what if they like are the New Year's Six representative? They wouldn't be able to go because according to rules, like they can't partic participate in a bowl game right now because their first year with FBS, you have to wait or something uh, like that. Next, we have Michigan crushing UConn. So UConn, I think, turned their season around after this week. Uh, this game in Ann Arbor, Michigan had the horrible non-conference schedule. Of course, it doesn't matter if you go undefeated. It does not matter. No one talked about Michigan's non-conference because they won every game, right? So Michigan made it very easy on themselves. If they would have lost the game, that would have been really, really a big emphasis, how bad their non-conference was. And, and UConn, for as fun as they were, they finished 6-6. Six and six. They're in a bowl game. I think their FPI was still outside of the top 100. I mean, they're just not a good team. Look at their quarterback. 4 of 16 for 17 yards. Their leading receiver for the game. One catch for 9 yards. And then for Michigan, Blake Corum, one of the more weird stat lines I've seen. 12 carries... 71 yards and five touchdowns. 12 carries, he had five touchdowns. Blake Corum, a lot of people wondering with Blake Corum, if he's healthy, he finishes that game against, uh, what was Michigan's second to last game? Oh my God, why can't I remember this? Illinois, 
He finishes the game against Illinois, and then, you know, obviously Donovan Edwards had those two long touchdowns. If he has those touchdowns, uh, I mean, I think he wins the Heisman. I mean, Caleb Williams, to me, is basically the Heisman because no one else is going to win it. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that he should, I agree. I do think he should at least be there in front of Stenson Bennett or CJ Stroud. I will agree there. Next, we have Oregon State beating Montana State. So guys, just a little backstory to this one. I think Montana State right now is like 10 and one or 11 and one. Like they're a good team. So technically, even though this is an FCS team, Winning by this much, it's a good win. I mean, that's a lot of points scored. This was Chance Nolan's only good game of the year. He was so bad this year, and they had to bench him, and now he's in the transfer portal. So it comes full circle. Uh, Montana State's quarterback, 9 of 18, three interceptions, no touchdowns. You hate seeing stuff like that. It's unfortunate, and it's sad, Uh, but that was a blowout with a ton of points scored in that game. Next, we've got the 73 to nothing. This was the biggest blowout of 2022 involving two FBS programs. This basically locked up that Florida International was going to finish with the worst uh, FPI mark on the season. You can't lose 73 to nothing. It's not even like Western Kentucky is that good. It is a just horrifically bad loss. Austin Reed, who is now in the transfer portal, and actually people are thinking Austin Reed's going to go to Louisville. Um, He ended up going 30 of 35, so he had the same amount of incompletions as he did touchdowns, almost 400 yards, and their their receiver, how about this stat line, three catches, 123, and two touchdowns, so just two really long touchdowns. Uh, The biggest blowout, you you can see the overall box score right there. It's beautiful. You feel bad for Florida International. Imagine if Florida International <laughs> went 5-7 and seven and they let them in a bowl game. Oh, that would have been amazing. Because because FIU went 4-8. and eight. I mean, they weren't... Like, the reason they were so bad was, be, was because they lost games like this. This lopsided. I think FIU had a stretch where they lost three straight games by 40 points. Like, late in the season as well. Uh, next, we have Syracuse and Wagner... RIP to the 80 burger. Guys, I was I remember this game. I was looking at the I think I saw it on ESPN, you know that little bottom line thing. Um and <laughs> Syracuse, I believe at halftime might have been up like 45 to nothing or like f- maybe like 49 to nothing. Yeah, 49 to nothing and I thought there was a chance at a fifth at an 80 burger. You can see their quarterback 17 of 17 238. Sean Tucker padding his stats. You, it, it's respectable. You got to respect it. Uh, Wagner's quarterback, two of six for 19 yards and an interception. I think Syracuse is the only like FBS team to have a dome. I think I read that somewhere and I thought about it and I was like, no, I think they're right. Like no, no college team has a dome except Syracuse. Um, but there you guys can see Syracuse just completely took their uh, their uh, you know foot off the pedal. And just kind of, unfortunately, it would have been great to see like an 86 to nothing type score. We need an 80 burger. We have not gotten an an 80 burger in I don't know how long. Next, we've got the Red River Rivalry. Uh, that name is so annoying to say. Uh, this is like Quinn Ewer's big game. Oklahoma starts a quarterback that doesn't know how to throw. And this is the result. And Oklahoma's leading rusher, that's actually a receiver who had five carries for 60 yards. I'm guessing on end arounds, Bijan Robinson, there were a lot of people that thought he should have made the Heisman ceremony. I just think it's a situation where, like, Texas was out of the playoff picture so early. It's, like, so hard for someone to make a Heisman ceremony when your team's eliminated, like, four weeks into the season. But he definitely is the best running back in college football, no doubt about that. Uh, but this was just an, an annihilation. And I think Texas was, was seven-point favorites in that game. Uh, next, we have Georgia just destroying Vanderbilt. 55 to nothing. Pretty standard Georgia win where they really don't put up crazy stats, but they're just a, a complete well-oiled machine. That's all that Georgia is, especially in a game like this. They're like robots. They just, they're always in the right spot. Their defense is sound. And they have more talent than you, and it's going to show on the field. And it's going to show in the box score, too. 55 to nothing. LSU beating Southern. So, little little fun factoid about this game. 65 to 17. 
you you look at it and you know it looks pretty standard, pretty normal, right? Not surprising that LSU wins by this much. You look at the scoring, the actual box score, 37 points in the first quarter. And then look at the second quarter. They scored less than a minute into the second quarter. So they were up 44 to nothing with 14 minutes left in the second quarter. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that. Uh, but then they took their their foot off the pedal and, and they ended up winning 65 to 17. So another crazy early blowout there. We've got North Texas. This is one of the craziest results of the year by far. North Texas 40 to 13 over Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky was seven point favorites at home coming into this game. So I wanted to include it because it is a blowout. It's not the biggest blowout. But it is just a crazy blowout, surprise blowout of the year. 40 to 13 there. Oh, this game. FSU beating Miami 45 to 3. And yes, I did say, I mean, I thought there was good value on Miami plus 8. I did. Uh, because it just it's the way, like Miami, they sold out this game. I remember on Twitter, they were like, we sold out the game. And every, everyone was happy. And Jordan Travis, who I think is coming back for FSU next year. If Jordan Travis does come back, FSU, I think, should be a preseason. Well, it depends with the portal. I'd say at least a preseason top 12 team, FSU, next year. If Travis comes back. Uh, and this was just their running back, Benson, 15 for 128 and two touchdowns. This is just the typical beatdown where one team quits. All right, it just one team. It's just a beatdown. Miami got beat so bad they quit. Uh, Tennessee beats Missouri. So a little fun thing about this game. I remember Tennessee running up the score. And guys, by running up the score, I don't mean scoring with 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter. T there was one minute left in this game. Tennessee was up 59 to 24, and Joe Milton, their backup quarterback, threw a 60-yard bomb down to the one yard line and then they with like 30 seconds left they called time out so they could score again because they wanted style points for the playoff and then karma bit them when they got trounced by South Carolina oh my goodness it's so crazy uh, but I do remember that and I made a video about it and Tennessee fans got so angry at me but I was like this is what running up the score is people always misrepresent running up the score. If you score a touchdown with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, I don't care if you're up by 90. That's not running up the score. You're just playing and there's like 10 minutes left. If you're throwing a bomb up by 30 with one minute left, yes, that is running up the score. That was That's really like the only time I've seen that in forever where they threw a bomb with a minute left. Um, so that was pretty crazy. How about this blowout? Oh my goodness. I remember I was like, take Baylor. I think Baylor was three-point favorites in this game. They were. I do remember that. Uh, and Kansas State. So this is really when Kansas State started taking off and we started treating them as, as possibly a team that would go to the um, Big 12 championship game. This was a swing game. Both of these teams came into it at 6-3. and three. And Baylor, I think, ended up losing three straight games. And, and Kansas State took off and finished 10-3. and three, And the rest is history. How about this crazy surprise blowout? Houston comes into this game, three, I think a six-point underdogs. And they win by 39 over East Carolina. East Carolina scores three points with that offense. That is crazy. And that's with their running back having 14 for 128. So how does that happen? What, do they have 10 turnovers? Oh, the snow game. Notre Dame beating Boston College. 44 to nothing, and Notre Dame was up 37 to nothing at halftime. Boston College's quarterback had one of the worst performances of the year. This was their backup. 9 of 22 for 117 and three interceptions in that one. Uh, and then how, how about this one with Hugh Freeze leaving New Mexico State, makes a bowl game with a crazy thrashing of Liberty. Liberty at home. 24 point favorites and they lose by 35 they lose by 35 points look at new mexico state's quarterback he needs a heisman three passing touchdowns 200 yards 125 rushing yards three touchdowns that is the high see guys we ha we did not have a heisman performance this year i think we just found it i think we found our heisman performance right there 
That is am- Liberty started the game with a 94% chance to win. Oh my goodness. And then of course, guys, how could I not include this one? This is a non-FCS or FBS team, Warner, losing 98 to nothing to Stephen F. Austin. And Stephen F. Austin right now is trying to join FBS. So I think there was something weird that happened in this game where Stephen F. Austin was up 98 to nothing. And then instead of kicking the extra point, they like kneeled on the ball because they didn't want to score the extra point. I don't know why that would make a difference. I think it would be hilarious if they, if, if they would make, make it 100 to nothing. At least you, you make news. You would make news if, if that happened. Uh, but I actually looked up the Warner team, and they had two games that were documented on ESPN. They lost to the they lost to West Florida, fifty two to three, and then they lost a few weeks later to Stephen F. Austin, ninety eight to nothing. Um, so I just thought that was funny to include that. But guys, those are just some of the biggest blowouts for college football in the twenty twenty two season. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.